my question for you of all the jobs so you've done you know 300 plus dirty jobs uh have you ever thought about podcasting have you ever thought about the trade of pod are we a dirty job because let me just throw this out there right we come in yeah. here on a sunday we watch 12 hours of football straight we gamble on every game we eat disgusting you know uh food that probably isn't great for you and then we record a podcast at midnight i would contend that's not much different than being like uh i think one time you ha you were like a uh reindeer dentist like what's the difference this is a dirty job this is a hard job wouldn't you say i uh, look you'll get no argument from me i think all jobs have the potential to become dirty you know depending on how broadly you define the term but it's the it's the sameness of a job that in many ways can ultimately make it dirty. If you, that thing you just described, that 12 hour day, you sit there, you watch football, you eat cold pizza, you forget to take a shower, do that three, four, five, 10 days in a row, 20 days, 100 days. That's when, you know, that's when your brain starts to change. And that's when, <laughs> I don't care how glamorous it is. In fact, I know glamorous, I know fashion models. It's disgusting. Their their job is disgusting. The, the 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 things they wind up having to do over time that you would never think about are are gr opera singing is disgusting. The costumes you have to wear, the sweat they they smell like a hockey outfit. You never know it. You're sitting there watching the opera, and some guys up there wailing away. He smells like ass, man. I'm mm -hmm. telling you, the I've never encountered a professional opera singer in the midst of a performance who smelled any better than an athlete at the end of the fourth quarter. Yeah. I mean, we had to watch 16 Jets games this year. Mm -hmm. I, I challenge you to find watch the Bears offense. a more difficult job yeah. in America than that. Yeah. Hey, man, I still remember the day, mid-March 1984, I guess it was, or was it 86, when the Colts left Baltimore? Mm -hmm. um, that, that for me, I mean, since this is still, you know, you guys are basically a sports thing, I'll tell you, that – that changed my relationship with uh, organized sports forever. You know, what, watching those Mayflower vans leave Baltimore in the middle of the night headed for Indianapolis. I, I've never been able to watch a football game or any organized sport the same way since. So sounds like this is the dirtiest job. You need to come and in, in shadow us for a Sunday and see – how it ranks against all these other dirty jobs you've done. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm actually fascinated by your, your podcast and your job. I, I do a podcast. It's very different from yours. Um, but uh, You can say smart. You can say smart. Yours is smart. Ours is I was, I, I was going to go with prescient. Mm. Uh, <laughs> important. Enlightening. <laughs> yes. it, well, obviously important. <laughs> but also uh, game-changing yeah. and uh, apocryphal. Uh -huh. Let's go with apocryphal. But also short. You do a, like a short form podcast, which I, I think, you know, like we essentially do like 20 of your podcasts every mm -hmm. single week. Mm -hmm. So we work yeah. harder. You work smarter, which goes against your whole thing, which is work smart. Yeah, and you're hard. a white collar podcaster. So yeah, exactly. So we're really down here in the <laughs> shit. Yeah, but that's it. This is the only thing you guys do. Uh, no, you, we you do I read a lot thing. of mock drafts as yeah. well. Yeah, I also watch college basketball. <laughs> Come on. You must be exhausted. Yeah. Yes, I am. We're going to get back to Mike Rowan in a second. Before we do, jackpocket, jackpocket, jackpocket. You know what tonight is? I think tonight's a Mega Millions drawing, isn't it? Mega Millions, Powerball, one of those two. Um, well, if you want to play the Mega Millions, if you want to play Powerball, and you don't want to go to the store, you want to do it from your smartphone, you can use Jackpocket. Jackpot, Jackpocket is the lottery app, and it's the easiest way to play your favorite lotto games right from your phone. You can play Mega Millions, Powerball, Cash for Life, Take 5, other daily games. Plus, you get automatic alerts when you win, and you can even receive the prizes right from your phone. Jackpocket is now available in New York and nine other states. You got New Jersey on there, Texas on there, many, many more. It's a safe and easier way to get your lotto tickets. You can pick your own lucky numbers instantly withdraw winnings from your bank account. Over $25 million in prizes have already been won on the app, and with their most recent $1 million jackpot winner coming from New Jersey, you too can win. Play tonight's Mega Millions. Play the Powerball jackpot for free. We're going to hook you guys up with a free play. Use promo code BARSTOOL. Maybe wet the beak a little bit. 
Maybe spend some money on a uh, on some merch from your favorite podcast. Maybe buy some uh, Billy Football merch, some No Way Jose merch that we'll have up there. All you have to do is download the free Jack Pocket app, or go to jackpocket.com and use promo code Barstool at the checkout screen. Must be 18 or older to play. See jackpocket.com for details. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER. 1-800-GAMBLER. Check it out. Jack Pocket, promo code Barstool at the checkout screen. What's the dirtiest job you've ever seen? I remember the, the one where you sexed chickens. I know Billy wants to hear more about that, but to me that was that was one of the dirtiest ones I saw you do. But in, in your mind, what's the dirtiest job? Yeah, well, there were 300, you know, and honestly, I mean, I get that question a fair amount, and I normally just spin, like there are 30 of those 300, 10% that are on a wheel of filth in my mind. And when I spin it, it doesn't matter which one it lands on. They're all honest answers to that question because you can't compare chick sexing to castrating uh, baby lambs with your teeth. Oof. And you can't compare that to hanging upside down on the Mackinac Bridge, 600 feet in the air, welding. And you can't compare that really to opal mining in Cooper PD, Australia, where you're lowered on a bosun's chair into a 60 foot shaft that's about the width of a manhole cover. And you can't really describe the claustrophobia that washes over you as you look up and see that little tiny dot of blue get smaller and smaller and smaller. You can't compare collecting semen from a turkey really mm. to anything. Mm. In fact, that's it right there. You have a On picture wall, of, of turkey cum? <laughs> I have a poster. Do you want to hear, honestly, what that job entails? Yes. I'll tell I'd you. I'd imagine please. jacking off a turkey. Yeah. That's it. But jacking off a turkey, that's that's child's play. I mean, I, I don't <laughs> know what's stuff. in your mind's eye, but the first thing <laughs> you have to remember is that the turkey's penis is uh, inside <laughs> its asshole. Oh. Right? <laughs> It, it it's called a cloaca yeah and uh this is typical of most avians and by the way the process i'm about to describe is the reason everybody gets a turkey on thanksgiving there, there would never be enough turkeys in the country right their breasts are too big right that's right they can't get together yeah to actually do it the old-fashioned way because they're full of steroids so their chests are big so they can't mate so what you do is you take one like that and you put it upside down between your thighs and you and you squeeze it a little bit. And then somebody hands you a jar, like just a little jar. It looks like a baby food jar. And the lid on the jar has two holes in it. And inside of each hole is a straw. So you hold the straw in your free hand, and then you direct your attention to the cloaca on the upside down turkey between your thighs. And then with your thumb, you start to stimulate the cloaca in the time-honored tradition that all males are no doubt familiar with. This is hot. And if you do it right, the orgasm that runs through the turkey <laughs> will allow the semen to collect in its rectum. And then what you do is... He comes into his own ass? A jar. What? A mask? No, he comes into his own yeah. ass. Oh, I thought you said you would wear a mask. No. Yes, he ejaculates. Remember, he's upside down. He ejaculates. <laughs> And the semen then puddles oh like a God. disappointing oh spill God. of milk uh -huh. in its in its asshole. So what <laughs> so, you do now, so wait, but how, in nature, how does does he then have to like open his asshole up and then go ass to ass with the the female with the hen? Well, they they actually face each other in nature and then they roll back <laughs> and the lady parts smash in to the asshole of the male bird and all of the spoojalote gets transferred through some miraculous way. It's very difficult. I mean, it's, yeah. it's kind of a miracle that there's ever been a baby turkey born when you consider the fact that they can't actually, you know, it's, it's not the typical in and out thing. Right. It's a very imperfect German pornography <laughs> thing we're talking about here yeah this this hits a little too close to home when you're like yeah their breasts are too big and their dick is in their asshole that you look directly right. at me when you said that so i was like shit okay um, well, i'll have to sit I on mean, your lap look, with a little baby food that's basically what it is you play the cards you get so the you know <laughs> the odds are against it in the first place but anyway you got a turkey upside down between your thighs his rectum is full of spunk you take the jar with the two straws 
And what you do is you put one straw into the rectum, right into the sperm, and then you put the other straw in your mouth, and then you start sucking. Did you ever and, think, hey, real quick, <laughs> did you think while you were doing this, like, there's got to be a better way? Mm -hmm. do, so, do I have to I use mean, my mouth? It, yeah. The thought went through my mind. <laughs> you know, it's the 21st century, guys. Maybe there's a tool that is a bit more sophisticated than a jar with two straws in it. But what you do is you create a vacuum in the jar by sucking on one straw. Right. And then you manipulate the other straw into the turkey's rectum. And as that vacuum intensifies, the sperm will come through the first straw and collect in your jar. And when you get all the sperm out of the rectum, you spread your thighs and the bird falls to the ground and flies off to boast and brag with the boys. And then they bring you another one. And then you do the same thing again. The thumb, yep. the straw, Jesus. right? And this goes on for a while, you know, until your jar is full of uh, sperm. And then you take the sperm from the jar and put it in these little pipettes. And then you put that into a, a, an injector gun. And then they bring you the hens and you go ahead and put that through their, uh, what you call the vulva, and you pull the trigger, and boom, you got a pregnant turkey. So, all right, so I would imagine that one was one where you're like, I don't, I couldn't imagine myself doing this every day. Is there, has there been a dirty job where you think back and you're like, you know what, I actually really enjoyed that, and I, I could do that for a living? Sure. Um, I remember, uh, you've been in New York, surely. We're, we, we're, we're, we're sitting right in New now, York yeah. right now. Yeah. You're in New York right now? Yep. Correct. Didn't know. Have you noticed the uh, wooden water towers yep. on top of virtually every building over five stories? Mm -hmm. You know, if you haven't, once you look for them, that's all you see. They're everywhere. And uh, those wooden water tanks hold all the water for the building. They're on the roof, right? Because gravity gets it to you a whole lot faster than if you had to pump it up. But the tanks have basically been built by the same company for the last 120 years called Rosenwick. And um, they need to be replaced, you know, every 20, 30 years or so. And these guys have the contracts on all of these tanks. So what will happen is at 9 o'clock, you know, the apartment empties, people go to work, these guys climb to the roof, and they, one piece at a time, disassemble these tanks. Now, some of these are up 30, 40 stories right? And you're at the very, very top, standing on a wooden platform that you're ultimately dissembling. And then they build a new one in the same day. And the, uh, the teamwork and the, uh, the speed with which these tanks are replaced day in and day out is, is a mix of like construction 101 and Cirque du Soleil. These guys are just death defying heights doing man's work in a in a real team oriented fashion it's a it's a marvel to watch and i had a ball doing it um and was glad to go home with all my fingers attached because they're swinging axes and mauls you know 150 feet in the air balancing on one foot i mean it's it's incredible to see and i i really had a good time doing that one hmm. those are the, those are the coolest because those are you think of, you know, where we're at as a uh, civilization and you just take all these things for granted and you don't realize, you know, someone's fucking a turkey. Someone's building a, an entire water holder on top of my building while I'm out at work. And that's where the Emmy comes in. Whoa. Look at that. That turkey changed my <laughs> career. <laughs> oh, uh, I, hey, I, that, I, that turkey still calls. Yeah. It's like, hey, man, what you, when are you, when you coming back to Minnesota, I... I miss your fancy opposable thumb. Yeah, the best lay I ever had. Yeah, did you did you request a, a picture of that turkey just so you could always like you know remember your day with it? Um, that turkey is seared into my retina, mm -hmm. so I really don't need its picture. But a friend of mine did blow that one up, and so yeah, I I keep it on the wall to remind me that no matter how weird my day gets, you know, I could be jerking off a turkey. It could be stranger. 